All right, everybody, welcome to the Slower Than You channel. Um, we're doing a couple of quick, basic tuning videos just to kind of help out some people that are just beginning into this. Um, it, not so much tuning on their own, but these videos, uh, there will be a small series of videos where we're just doing stuff that on the user end are still things that you need to know um, to either help out your tuner or when you're bringing it to a, a new tuner or um, you know, just informational for your own purposes to be able to look at some key items. And the first thing right off the bat, the absolute most basic thing you can want to do is be able to pull your tune and your data log off of your ECU and know where to find them so that you can email them out uh, to whoever is working with your car. Uh, so as soon as you open up the Holly software, this is the first window that's going to pop up. It's going to ask you uh, if you want to open a global file, which is the, the tune itself or the calibration. Uh, if you want to open up a data log or if you want to download from the ECU or if you want to just start creating a new global file or if you want to open up a specific uh, file. Going into a couple of these, if, you, if you're just supposed to be getting a data log for somebody, then you could just click this and you can go straight to um, you know, that portion. But I really recommend always giving the, the tune file itself, the global file, to whoever is going to be looking at the data log as well, just so that they have the most recent calibration. There is some information that is uh, stored in each of the calibrations, and, and it changes as you're driving your car around because that learn table, the fuel learn table, uh, will constantly be populated based on closed loop values. So once you click yes on that, um, all of these things will show synced up. This will close automatically unless you push the button there, and it'll close early. So this is the table uh, that I'm talking about here, the learn table. So these values are constantly changing as you're driving around your car and it gives you a quick snapshot. You know, you can look at this table and immediately see, okay, you know, it's going back and forth a little bit here. There's a couple of uh, areas of the table that need to be changed, but up here, we got a major problem. This is obviously, it's constantly adding a boatload of fuel. So that means something is out up here, whether it's injector, pump, you can drill into that further with the data log, but this gives you a quick snapshot of what fuel is doing. And so I always like giving the calibration uh, to whoever is working on the car so they can get that quick look. Um, now, obviously, I, oh, I guess I skipped ahead a little bit on this, but to get this in the first place, once you open up the software, you need to make sure that you have the USB cable plugged into your uh, computer and key on so you know once you turn the key on and and the car primes the fuel pump or you see that the dash come on either way you need to power up uh, the vehicle uh, so that the ecu turns on and then you will be able to uh, connect if you don't have it plugged in so let's say for example we tried uh, connecting to this right now and it is plugged in you see everything goes through there and everything passes it's synced up now if i tried to do the same thing with that unplugged this isn't even an option. Now in version five, uh, sometimes this still is an option. And when you click it, it'll just basically show that it's not able to uh, sync all of those items. So that gives you an indication. If you, if you have your ECU plugged in and you go up here and you click this and it just says failed or you know uh, that it's trying to connect on all of these, um, check the other end of your USB. It might not be plugged into the ECU. So um, once you're plugged in, you have downloaded what is uh, currently on the ECU. You wanna make sure that you save it to your computer so that you can send it. So in that, you go over to file, save global file as, and then uh, you can save this. You wanna navigate, make sure that you keep in mind what file or what folder this is actually going into. Cause we'll go, we'll need to grab that later when you actually need to send it to the person. But um, when you install the software, it's always going to have these uh, default folders. So a Holly folder will be created. Uh, version 4, if that's what you're using, or if it's version 5, it'll have a version 5 folder. Um, and then global files. So if you come into the version 4 folder, it's going to have all these. You can go to data log configs, data logs, monitoring, firmware, global files. So that's where all the tunes are. Double click on that. It'll say base calibrations or custom calibrations. The base ones, they have a bunch that came uh, with the software. Custom Calibrations also has a bunch that came with the software. You can click on that. Now at this point, a lot of these are default folders that come with the software, like the Ford and GM and uh, Mopar. You can create uh, your own custom folder if you just come over here and right click and then go over to new, 
and it'll give you the option to create a new folder. And then you can just name it whatever the heck you want and save all of your folders there. So this one uh, that says Liam, that's a custom folder that we made. And that's where I keep all of the uh, global files for this car. So we'll click on that. I'm gonna use this name just as, just for this. Click save. I'm replacing the file so it gives me a prompt saying that something already exists in this name. I say yes. Um, this isn't a huge deal. If this comes up, it just means that something is in pin map that isn't actually uh, assigned to a specific pin. That's fine. It's not, it's, it's not going to harm anything. Just go ahead and click yes. Uh, if anything, just make a note to uh, whoever you're giving uh, the file to that there are some unmapped pins. So click yes. All right, so now you have that file uh, on your computer. The next thing that you want to download is the data log itself. So you're still plugged into the ECU. Uh, the key is still on, so the ECU is powered up. So when you click on data log, you should be able to scroll down to this and select download ECU data logs. You click on that, it's gonna show you all of the uh, logs that are on the ECU from auto logging. Um, the furthest one at the bottom is always gonna be the most recent. So the last run that this vehicle did is this log right here. So you're gonna click on it and then click download. And it's going to uh, take a couple minutes to download depending on the file size. So uh, these are, um, you know, not huge files. There's plenty of people that have a lot bigger of a file. Uh, the fewer things that you have, the fewer sensors that you're logging and the rate at which it's logging is gonna determine the file size. So if you are on a dominator and you are logging boatloads of sensors like shock position sensors, wastegate sensors, uh, you know, a bunch of different map sensors. All of that stuff is just extra data that you're recording. And then you can also set up, it, uh, set up the log to record at a faster or a slower rate. So if you want to get really, really fine information uh, where you wanna see one of the sensor values, like what it does within a fraction of a fraction of a second, you can turn up that rate really high, but keep in mind your file size is gonna shoot through the roof because the entire time that you're recording that, it's going to be recording at that rate. So slower uh, recording rate is gonna give you less granular data, but it's gonna be a much smaller file. So it really just depends on uh, what you need. All right, so that is downloaded. So at that point now, that automatically saves. So we don't get to name that, unfortunately. Um, so at this point, it saves it into your data log folder automatically as this file name. So now that we have that completed, you can click close, then go back up to the data log at this point. So at this point, you can actually unplug from the car. You do not need to be uh, plugged into the car anymore. You have both files on your computer. But if you wanna pull it off, you just come over here to open data log. And that's going to see how I said uh, if, you know, Holly always puts you back into the folder that you were just in. So remember how we navigated to the Liam folder when we were trying to save the calibration? Well, now that we want to open up a data log, we're in that same folder and now it's empty. That's because we're looking for data log files. There are no data log files in this folder. It's all full of calibration files. So it's not going to show anything. Uh, but no big deal, all we gotta do is navigate back to the folder that uh, has all of the logs. So we'll start, you can go all the way back to the Holly folder or you can at least go back to the version four folder. We'll go back to that one right now um, because chances are you're only gonna have one of the software uh, on, your, on your computer. So if you go all the way back out to the version four folder, uh, you can come back to the data logs folder. This is where Holly is automatically going to put all of the uh, logs that you download from that window that we just saw. So I'll click on that. And remember how I said it just downloads as that default number? This is the last log that we put on there. You can verify that just by looking at the date. So I have all of my dates with the newest one at the very top. Uh, so that says 811. That's definitely today. Obviously it wasn't this one because this was a couple days ago. So this is the one that we want. Uh, if you want to open it up and view it, uh, you can just double click on it right now and it'll open up and there's your log file. So whoever is working 
that line is all over the place because it was on the street and it was spinning like crazy. Okay, so yeah, if you're wanting to look at the log yourself, you can go ahead and look at that here and you can relay back some information. But if you just wanna send it, you don't know what the hell you're looking at, you just wanna send it off to the person that's working with your car, um, that's fine. So you'll just pull up whatever uh, browser um, or whatever email system that you use. And here, let me remove these real quick so I can show you how to go through that. Uh, so you'll just pull up whatever email system you use. Almost all of them are going to uh, have a paperclip of some sort uh, as the symbol for attaching files. Find that uh, or whatever icon that says attach files and click on it. It'll prompt you usually to say you know, where you want to get those files from. You want to get them from your computer. So click on this. That'll bring up a window that basically just navigates your uh, computer. So you can go anywhere from in here. If you haven't ever opened anything up on Holly, it's probably not gonna drop you right at the Holly folder. So this is just kind of basic, you know, uh, Windows software uh, navigation, um, depending on where you start out at uh, and depending on what operating software that you have. Um, this is going to be slightly different, but, it, but it's pretty similar across all of the uh, Windows platforms. So. For this software, you can go straight to documents and then that Holly folder has uh, already been put there when you originally installed the Holly software. So click on that. It'll have whatever versions of Holly you have on here. So if you only have one, that's the only folder that's gonna be here. If you have all of them, then this is where they all automatically get put. Okay, so whatever software that you're actually using for this, uh, go ahead into that folder. And so all of this should start looking familiar again. Uh, we're going through the same folders that we were going through to make sure that we saved it in the right place. We're just going to those same files to go get the file, um, or those same folders to go get the file. Uh, so first we wanna do the global file, the tune itself. So we'll go to the global files folder. Remember we put a uh, folder into custom and here's the Liam folder. So right off the bat, this might not be organized uh, the way it is right now. So you may not see the file that you originally uh, downloaded at the very top. The easiest way, if you just downloaded it, it's going to be the most recent file. So I come over to date modified and just click that so that it's uh, filtering the most recent up at the top. You can click on this multiple times and it'll go to either oldest at the top or newest at the top. Just click on newest, it's gonna be that first one that comes in there. Um, or you can just uh, scroll through here and you know find it by name, whatever you wanna do. But I've got a bunch of files in here, so uh, it's easiest just to click date modified and that filters it up to the very top. So once we get here, you click on that, you can either go down here to click on open or you can just double click it, they both do the same thing. And so now you see that is going to be uh, uploading it to the email. Now we go back and do the same exact process, attach files from the computer. Most uh, software, is, it's gonna dump you right back into the same folder that you were just in. Uh, if it doesn't, just navigate back in there just the same way that you did previously. Go to documents, find the Holly folder, go to the software that you're using, and then instead of going to global files, we're gonna go to data logs this time, because that's what we wanna get. And you can use the same method here. So it's the newest one is already up at the top, but if for some reason you were like, you know, halfway through here or something like that, um, you can just scroll all the way back up to the top, click date modified so that the newest date is up at the top. And this is gonna be the one. You can also rename this. So when you actually save it in the software, uh, for example, let's come back over here. Let's say this was the first time that you're opening up that log that you downloaded from the ECU. So it has the raw file name here. Um, you can actually rename it right here as long as it's not open yet. So let me give you an example. Close this log real quick so that it doesn't freak out on me. So say you just got finished downloading it and you wanna come and open it. You know this one is at the very top. You can rename it right here if you want. So right click on that and then scroll down here to rename and it'll let you name it whatever you want. So, actually, we'll just name it that. 
Okay, so, uh, and then you can open it up. And if you decide you wanna change the name of it later, now that you're, you're looking at the log itself, you just come up here to file, save as, and you can name it whatever the hell you want here. It'll name, uh, it'll save another file. So yeah, a couple different ways uh, to save that and to change the name on it, but back to actually emailing it. So you'll see now at the very top, uh, now it says Liam Street hit one. So click on that, click open, or just double click on it, and you'll see it down here in your email screen, start to upload. Okay, and then so once that's done, you're pretty much ready to you know fill out whoever's email address you're sending it to and send it off. These files are attached and they'll be in a file format that your tuner will recognize and be able to open immediately. Uh, one thing to keep in mind of when you're sending these, make sure uh, that you're not exceeding your file size limit. So you'll see the, the tune file isn't very big. It's only 303K. Um, the logs can be very large. So you see this one is 9.8 meg. If you were trying to send you know, five of these on here um, and you have a file size limit on your email system because it's free of like 25 meg, it's gonna you know, throw an alert and it's gonna get all pissed off. Um, so you may have to send these individually. Just you know, a tip for the future. Um, some of the data log files can be pretty big. So, um, But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this uh, helped out. I know it's helping me out specifically because uh, I get this question a lot uh, where I want to be able to see somebody's uh, most recent tune file and their data logs of you know, all of their passes that they went to the track just to make sure that um, you know everything is going good or if I wanna make any changes based on that data. And uh, you know the, the owners, I, I really like everybody to be able to do at least the most basic stuff and it doesn't get more basic than this. So please, please um, always try to learn the, you know, the basics to help out whoever is tuning your car. I know they're supposed to be the ones that are tuning it. They're going to be making all the changes, but you still need to uh, be able to provide them the information that they need in order to, t to take care of your setup uh, or vehicle. So definitely, um, you know, hopefully this helped everybody. I know it's going to help me because I'm just going to point everybody to this video whenever they ask me, how do I get my tune or how do I get a data log and send it over to you. So saves me a bunch of time. Hopefully it saves uh, other tuners some time and hopefully helps out uh, a bunch of other people. Uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. Uh, there are other tech videos that you can go and check out on my channel. There's a playlist specifically for uh, tuning and tech videos. Uh, but if you want something that's a little bit less dry and technical, you can always go to the channel and check out any of our racing videos. So yeah, that's basically it. We will uh, see you on the next one. Thanks.